Hi guys, so many of you have asked about my personal life and how I balance my marriage and my career. So I thought that I would bring the perfect guest to chat about this together. Everybody. So my guest is here and it is my lovely husband, Mr. Corey Hardrick, or I call him Mr. Hardrick. What's up? How you doing? <laughs> we have been married for almost 10 years and we've been together for almost 18 years. Oh Lord. <laughs> but we're going strong. Yes, we are. It's been a long time. But anyway, I had a lot of people go to Tia Mori's Quick Fix on my Instagram page and I wanted them to ask some questions about, you know, us and our marriage and how we make it work because they were asking me personal questions. Bring it on. Um, about our marriage. And so I wanted to, you know, answer some of these questions. Let's do it. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, so this is the first time I'm like seeing these questions, Corey, and this oh. is the first time you're seeing these questions too. Uh, okay. All right, okay, let's go. so this is from Andrew Vargas0327. Oh, this is really cute. Best memories with each other before marriage. Wow, best memories. I would say Hawaii. We went to Hawaii. Oh, yeah, we did. We went to Hawaii before we got married and um, 2003, after I graduated. Yeah, that was and that was my first time. You you already went to Hawaii. You mm -hmm. would go like every year. That was my first ex great experience with you. Remember we jumped mm -hmm. off the rock. We I did things that I never done before. Went to Luau. Right? Yeah. So that was my first great experience with my wife. <laughs> I think mine would definitely have to be our first kiss. It was just so beautiful. It was at a park and guys, he asked me to kiss him. Like he didn't just go in for the kill. He was like, can I kiss you? And I just thought that that was just so sweet, so kind. That was great. The, the first kiss was great. It was like we had a picnic, didn't we? Yeah, we had a picnic. I remember I had an afro. Uh-huh. Yeah. You were wearing an Allen Iverson, Iverson jersey. jersey. I remember. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Allen Iverson. And your cousin. I played him in basketball. Yes, you did. And I whooped his <laughs> I told you he has no filter. <laughs> that would definitely have to be one of my best memories of us before we got married. Um, okay. How did you know that he or she was the one? I knew Tia was the one for me when she was in my corner when I moved to LA. When I moved to Inglewood and I didn't have like, I had like two pair of drawers to my name. <laughs> I was dirt poor, mm -hmm. I didn't have anything. And she, she appreciated everything like for what it was and she loved me for me. And then I knew once I can get financially in a better situation that I'm gonna buy her a ring and that's gonna be my wife. Mm -hmm. And here we are. Aww. So that's when I knew she was the one for me. Don't make me cry. Because it was real love, you mm -hmm. know? And um, it's not perfect now. No, it's not. We might fight when I get home. <laughs> But listen, no, and that's there are life. moments when he gets on my last nerve. Hey, but that's love, so. It is. I don't think I ever told anybody this, but I had just gotten out of a terrible, terrible relationship. And my husband, he just had loads of patience with me. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. When I was like, I'm not sure if I really want to get in a relationship right now. I just need, you know, some time. And he was just right there for me and held my hand. He had a lot of patience with everything. He never forced himself, you know, to kiss me or just anything like that. I just thought that that was just cool and amazing. And not only that, he taught me how to believe in myself. I don't know, I'm about to cry. More than I believe in myself. He's like my biggest supporter, so. Don't cry. Honey. You're my biggest fan. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I don't know why I didn't mean to cry. Do you guys pray together? Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. we're not like super, super religious, but I just keep it simple and just believe, you know, words are powerful and you can speak things over people's lives and mm -hmm. I speak positivity and just good things over my family. Always. So. Corey is a man of faith and a man of God. He'll put something on, a, on the board and he'll say, Tia, I know that that's gonna come to pass. And I'm like, this dude is crazy. <laughs> like, what is he talking? But for real, then it comes to pass. This is another question, which I think is important. 
Rosie King 2015 said, how did you both meet and what's the secret to a successful marriage? It was a horror film, an independent horror film, right? Yeah, that we shot. Hollywood Horror. Just look at the title, so. And the movie was horrible. <laughs> yes. I had like this jerry curl with flip flops. No, I you didn't have flip flops. You had off. Birkenstocks. What's the, the same thing? My no, feet were out. They're not the same. <laughs> no, flip flops and Birkenstocks are not the same thing, okay, people? I was waiting for the bus. <laughs> T and her sister gave me a ride home yep. down to Inglewood, and we were got cool right mm -hmm. ever since then, and um, that's how we met. That's how we met. We were yeah. friends. Yeah, we were. Friends we were friends for, for a whole year. Like yep. for a whole year, we didn't, you know, like I said, kiss or anything, go out on dates. We were just friends. Yeah. And then after that year, that's when we started dating, and that was in 2000. So we met, oh my gosh, has it been more than 18 years? We met 2000. in 1999. No, we started dating in 2000. I'm I have sure. it all in my diary, so I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, let's see. I didn't, we didn't finish the question, it was really important. Oh, um, what's the secret to a successful marriage? For me, I think the secret to a successful marriage is forgiveness. I really do. There are gonna be times when you do something to someone that hurts their feelings, whether it's an action or whether it's just something that you say, and then you have to be willing to forgive. But not only that, I think it's, it's important to uplift your significant other. Even with the simplest things, whether it's like, thank you for taking the trash out. I know it sounds so stupid, but it's true. Sometimes we always focus on the things that we need to work on, but I think it's really important to celebrate the things that you are doing great within a marriage. So that's my... Uh, mine would be never go to sleep at night angry at each other, you know? He kisses me every... We haven't told this to anybody. Yeah. He kisses me every single night before we go to bed. Even when I go to bed earlier, at Even night. if she's mad at me, I'll still do and it. And I'm like. <laughs> yeah, she'll move her head. And I'm like, come here, give me Yeah, it. he would like so literally I would say pin that. me down and like kiss me. <laughs> yeah, so that yeah. is communicating mm -hmm. with each other. So that's that would be my secret. How do you guys keep the spark in your relationship? I think it's really important to go out on date nights. Like we, def we still date each other. I think it's important to still try to woo your significant other. Yeah, you have them and you're married, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to give up. So still like dress nice for your significant other and put on that, you know, nice, what does Beyonce say, freakum dress? <laughs> <laughs> we definitely make sure that we have date night at least once a week or every once every two yeah. weeks where it's just him and I. Nobody else, no friends, no no Cree, no babies, no nothing. I think that's kind of how you keep the, the spark. What's the sweetest thing he's ever done for you? What I think the sweetest thing you've ever done for me was when we were still courting each other. So I had gone out to dinner with a whole bunch of friends and you had gone out to dinner with us. We were in Marina Del Rey at oh, Cheesecake Factory. That one. Yeah. With the flowers in yes, the trunk. Yes, with the flowers. Oh, I so knew. I'm literally leaving the premises, like headed out in my car, about to make a right-hand turn. He just stops me, he goes, wait, 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 wait. He's like, I have something for you. And I was like, oh my God, like, what do you have? Because she was with a crowd of people. Yeah. And I was kind of like, I hope they just keep walking so I can do this kind of like. <laughs> by yourself. By myself. I was so shy and embarrassed and <laughs> shamed, but I said, I gotta give them to her. They're just gonna die in my trunk. He popped open up his trunk and he had roses. Like in his trunk. They were playing like Ralph's. Like. <laughs> it's and they good. still had the plastic on them, yeah. but that's all I could do at the moment. Like, and he was like, here. And I was yeah. like, oh my gosh, this is so sweet. And I took the roses and I was like, no. And I was like, bye. Do you remember that? Yeah. And that I remember me driving away like, she's going to see that $12.99 sticker on them. <laughs> and say, I will never talk to this dude in my life. Okay, next question. Bennett Coco, are you guys super excited for the new edition and is Cree happy to be a big brother? Yes, we're really excited. We've always wanted, we've wanted two kids. Uh -huh. You know, we would have a whole farm if we lived in the Midwest, but this is LA and it's very expensive. <laughs> so we gotta keep the kids to a minimum. But we're very excited. Um, I'm praying for a girl. 
He's always wanted but a girl. Number one, we just want a healthy baby. Mm -hmm. And um, that's the most important thing. And Cree's very excited. He's going to be a big brother. And, um, you know, he always wants to hear mommy's belly. And um, when you're doing the, the heartbeat. The heartbeat. Yeah. So it's a great. It's a great time in the Hardrick household. Yeah, I think he's gonna be an incredible big brother. And he's already just so nurturing just with me. Yeah. He's like making sure that I'm okay. He's like, mommy, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Mommy, are you okay? He's just, oh, and you know what he did say? You know how kids say the darnest things? The other day he said, mommy, your butt is the same size as your belly. I was like, oh my <laughs> Yeah. It's like, okay, yeah. I'm like, is that a good thing? <laughs> but anyway, it's it's nice this time around to have, you know, Cree there and to enjoy this pregnancy. I feel like I'm enjoying this pregnancy more so far than the first one. Yeah. And maybe because I know what's, you know, coming and I can just relax a little more. Um, is that it? Key three king? Yes, key three king. How do you balance being a mother and a wife without forgetting you? I think that's a really, really good question. I think, you know, as a wife, my priority is, you know, my husband and being there for him and nurturing him, you know, mentally, physically, and spiritually. And then as a mom, it's the same way. I'm there to nurture my son's thoughts and his development and his growth. And when you think about having those two responsibilities, it's very easy to forget about you. But I think it's really, really important. I always live by this saying that if you don't take care of the mother goose, how can the mother goose lay an egg? Like, how can she be healthy enough to lay an egg? So I think it's really, really important for you. And, you know, it's okay to be selfish sometimes and focus on your needs, your desires, your wants. And I always feel like just because you are a mom, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to forget about your aspirations, your desires, your wants, and what you want to do in life. And I think it's very easy for women to, you know, forget about themselves. But I think in order for you to be a great wife and in order for you to be a great mother, you have to be happy and you have to take care of yourself. And when you do that, then I think it creates some sort of balance within your your family, and I am not afraid to have me time. <laughs> no, she's not. She's talking about yoga already and getting back in yoga class. And yeah. That hip, hip hop dancing. You uh, were it's called dance hall dancing. Dance yeah. Dance hall dancing. But that's my time. I have an hour, the phone's down to myself, and I just have a great time, and I come home refreshed. Do I not? Yes. I do. So, do you. <laughs> <laughs> And I like to sit at home in the corner in the dark and just chill. He's so chill, this one. And I think some people are like, how does this work, too? And I think I'm like the la 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 la, I'm the spaz, and he's like the, you know, the, look at him, just like the calm, and it just works. Peace. <laughs>